That's right, Collider Heroes, episode 134. We're gonna be rocking all Twitter questions. That's right, we're flapping around like a little bird for you guys. It's Twitter questions, we're gonna rock them out. With me today is Amy Dallin. Also flapping like a bird, <laughs> I guess, hello. Well, and also we've got flapping around right here, Robert Meyer Burnett. How's it going, John? Oh, it's going okay. Just like kind of violently flying around like a Twitter bird. It's like it's like when uh, Heather O'Rourke said uh, when her bird Tweety died in Poltergeist. Right. She's like, put a flower with him. Oh, I feel that way now. Anyway, it's good to be here. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it. We got a question from Stephen Braithwaite, and he asks, as awesome as movie studios' appearances at Comic Con are, do you think it's it's helping or hurting the comic book industry? Um. Boy, you know what? I think it's helping. <laughs> it's like, uh, hurting is, I don't see it hurting at all. I mean, I think some fans might be a little hurt that they didn't get to see Avengers Infinity War. But really, what that does is that creates a groundswell of anticipation to finally see Infinity War. And when they finally do release it, which it's, their, it's the, the studio's right to release a trailer or any kind of press when they want to. It's not when fans demand. It has nothing to do with what fans demand. It's uh, when they're ready to release it. And specifically, if they're doing some stuff like at Comic-Con for people who've waited outside for four days sleeping on the floor, um, I think it's okay that they get to see a trailer maybe a few months before the rest of the world. But uh, as far as the rest of it, I think any of this kind of press is good for the comic book industry. I think a lot of comic book stores would be closed right now if we didn't have this amazing world of television and movies that are keeping afloat the ideas about of the idea of comic books and the ability to keep this a very cheap way of creating incredible entertainment. You have a writer, you have an artist, you have a team of colorists, you have a printer, you have an entire world every month. That's different than any of these other mediums, which is like you make a TV show, hundreds of people are involved for months and months and months making one episode. That's different than a comic book. One writer, one artist, maybe two artists, an anchor, colorist, letterer, maybe an editor. Come on, it's less than 10 people. Then get some people to print it. That's amazing. That's incredible. You create entire worlds, galaxies, and that's at your fingertips, or a, an amazing film noir detective story. At, in the world of comic books, it can be any genre. It doesn't have to be people in, in suits and fighting each other in outer space. or in the, it's, a, it's not a, just about superheroes. So I feel it's not hurting it. Amy, what do you think? I, I think that was a beautiful answer. Uh, I, I think it's definitely not hurting it for me uh, because all of the wider media, it's most people's way into comics. Like most people remember the cartoon or the show or the movie that they saw like uh, that introduced them to these characters. And that's never going to be a thing that hurts comics. You can argue about how much it helps. I think it helps a lot and that the effects are sort of slow and hard to track in like it's not as simple as I saw one movie, now I read books every week for the rest of my life, but you can get introduced to that world that way. And I think the only argument you can make that it's hurting is the idea of it pushing comic books to the side. And I think that hunger has been filled, like is filled by other things at Comic-Con and has been filled by a lot of these small and mid-sized cons, which have become just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. As people decide maybe to skip San Diego, New York has become enormous. Uh, Emerald City has become wonderful. C2E2 is chock-a-block with like comic book announcements. Like there's these great great other shows, which means even more people have access to this stuff. So I think it's all good. Totally right. I don't think that there's anything I could add to both of your comments, which are so beautifully stated. I mean, I, all I know is that, you know, when I was a kid, junior high, high school, college, there was about a, a, a 12 year period of my life where I went to the comic book store every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, to me, it was almost like therapy. And it, it got me through some tough times. And I knew that every Wednesday there was always books coming out. And every Wednesday I would get something that made me happy, no mm -hmm. matter where I was in my life. And, you know, I think that uh, that should be good for a lot of people. And I think, like you both said, what is better than t it, it all cross promotes? It's all cross promotion, whether it's video games, whether it's television, whether it's movies. Look, getting into a comic book store and look, I can't go buy Ed Brubaker's uh, run on Captain America if you like Civil War and if you like especially Winter Soldier. You, you change your life. It's great stuff. And it all feeds in together. Yeah. I think it's great. 
Or, and if you like Ed Brubaker as a writer, buy Criminal, which is a detective, <laughs> a really hard detective noir series, which I love with Sean Phillips. And they've got volumes and volumes of that. And it's like, so you get your pick. You can go to outer space. You can watch, read a criminal, a horrible story about like low life, screwing each other over. I mean, that's the world of comics or superheroes. I mean, it's a heightened reality uh, and it's every week. I agree with you, Robert. It's like, it's so much fun. Like. I'm, gonna gr I'm a grown ass man. I go to a comic book store every Wednesday. Why? Because it makes me feel great. I love it. I love all the different worlds that are there. The written word, the drawn picture combined, and it's telling a beautiful story. It's telling a different kind of story, different kind of art, different kind of writing. Every single issue, you have different adventures. And that's for myself, it makes me feel so good. I mean, so everyone who's out there running comic book stores, thank you for keeping comic book stores alive. Um, let's go to the next question. Full Metal Mando asks, what do you think the hero sculptures on the buildings in Thor Ragnarok mean for the story or possible character appearances? So this got really deep and sweaty. If you look over that picture, that picture is all over online. Somebody noticed they were like, got a little freeze frame. It's like literally in the trailer for like half a second. I didn't even <laughs> notice it. Someone was like, look, there's the by beast over there in the lower right hand side. There's Beta Ray Bill and the man thing. I was like, wow, man, you're absolutely right. That most definitely is all those characters. It definitely is all those characters. Absolutely not. They're not going to be in there. They're definitely not going to be in the film at all. I can guarantee you, I don't know this for a fact, but I can kind of guarantee you that those are little like nuggets that just like, you know, little Easter eggs are like, oh, I wonder if someone will notice. They totally noticed. They freeze framed every frame of the Thor Ragnarok trailer. Why? Because it was awesome. So people were like, what other little, uh, you know, freaking out. There's man thing. Man thing will not be, you will not know the touch of fear <laughs> by the man thing because he's not in the movie. He's just, he's maybe dead. They're like, these are the heroes that have fought or whatever. I don't know. What do you think? Robert, I'll start with you. Are they going to be in the movie? I don't think they're going to be in the movie, but they're clearly people that must have competed at one yes. time or another. And, they, you know, and the games, the games master is his, uh, it's the games master. Yeah. The games master, the games <laughs> master's arena. And I love that idea. And, and that's why I like the MCU. They do things like this. Mm -hmm. And who's to say we're not going to see them, but I don't think we're going to see them in the movie, but I like that they're, there's a callback. Right. There's definitely a little, like, there's a, hey, look, Beta Ray Bill exists in this world. And there's, he fought in that arena once. Yes, yeah, there's his horse face. I feel a Grandmaster? There's a Grandmaster. Grand Grand did I say Games Master, Grandmaster? Yeah, it's a yeah. Grandmaster. Uh, sorry, making sure. Yeah. On the right The collector's track. brother. Yeah. Uh, the Contest of Champions! <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think you're probably right, but it's really fun to speculate. And, like, meaningfully, that, that, like someday, Beta Ray Bill, right? Someday. Yes, we certainly can. He's hope. out there. He's out there. He's canon. We don't he's know if canon he died. Maybe the Bi Beast died, <laughs> but somehow Beta Ray Bill escaped. And he was like, Grandmaster was like, oh, let's put him on there. It's all, it's cool, you know. So good question. Let's get to the next one. Gallen Merrick asks, Are we not going to talk about Batman having superpowers? Meta human. Uh, yes, we'll address it right now. Um, I don't like talking about it because I think it's stupid. I'll personally say Batman is a human being. Just like the rest of us, he just happened to put a lot of effort into becoming the greatest detective on the planet. And you can do that by studying. You don't have to be a metahuman. So I don't like that they're like flipping it with this whole metahuman thing. It's like, guess who's a metahuman? The Flash, because he can run and go through time. He can run like super fast. He's a metahuman. Batman has just trained his body to physical perfection by training his body every day to physical perfection. How did he become the world's greatest detective? By studying every day. I mean, that's my personal feeling about it. So when you call Batman, well, he is a metahuman because he's better than most people. It's like, no, he's just, he's studied and worked out as much as a human can possibly be and he's at the top of his game. So I'm never gonna call Batman a metahuman. I'm gonna call him a human being who is focused and trained to destroy criminals. That's his, his goal is to be the protector of other people who lost their parents, who were murdered. He's, I mean, you have to go back to the core of what created Batman, and that's Bruce Wayne as a little kid watching his parents murdered in front of him. That's not metahuman, that's reality, that's physical emotions. So that's what drives the Batman to be who he is. It has nothing to do with metahumans. I think it's stupid. Amy? How could I possibly add to that? Yeah, Batman's a human. He's not a metahuman, or I won't tend to consider him that way because that's the core of 
who he is. We talked yesterday about how like flexible and deep his mythology is and how everybody puts their stamp on it. So there are probably people who are going to try things that I decide don't fit my idea of Batman and calling him a metahuman is one of those. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Sorry, I went on a rant, but I was, was just, like, I was just <laughs> sort of like, look, you know what? And, hey, look, if someone is writing Batman as a metahuman, they're like, in order for him to join the new guy, the new gods and breathe in outer space. He must be a metahuman or whatever, for whatever reason, uh, they're making, they're ca calling him a metahuman so it fits into the Justice League, DCEU, whatever. They're, these metahumans, oh, you mean like Harley Quinn, a girl who carries a baseball bat, she's a metahuman? Come on. I mean, if Death they're using- Death definitely. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, pushing it for me. So look, if they have to do that for whatever, however long they do it, I'll just wait till they stop doing it and then it'll return to the Batman that I know. What do you think? Uh, look, in the trailer, Ben Affleck is asked by The Flash, what's your superpower? And he says, I'm rich. He didn't even get rich on his own. He inherited family money. Right. <laughs> so the only thing Batman really has going for him is the fact that he earned his intelligence and he earned his physique. Mm -hmm. he, he built those things up on his own through years of study and, and dedication. And that's why we like Batman, because he is the best of what humanity could offer. We could all be Batman if we wanted to study and work right. hard. All of us. Or we might want to dress rich. up as an owl. Or, you know, maybe bat's not your thing. Perhaps a spider. But I agree with what you're saying. Next question. Samuel Reed asks, do you think the Flashpoint is a soft reboot? Maybe to change actors like Leto and bring Clark Kent back? It's a good question, Samuel. So we addressed this a couple uh, episodes ago where we talked about Flashpoint. Flash, Flashpoint, whatever they're going to call it. If it's going to flash, point. I don't know how they're going to break it up, but what is it going to be? It's going to be the first movie starring The Flash, but I guess it's going to probably star the rest of the DCEU and could be the unofficial Justice League 2 that we have been waiting for because they haven't announced that yet. There's no date for a Justice League 2. They're announcing all these other movies. What are your thoughts about this Flashpoint being a reboot and a way to kind of course correct some of the possible perceived mistakes of perhaps the earlier films of the DCU, Amy? I don't love it as a precedent. Uh, I, it's, it feels like a patch put on something rather than something that exists to serve its own purpose. Like I, I don't love the idea of using it for the soft reboot if that's the reasons they're doing this. If they're just like, no, 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 we are absolutely in love with the story of Flashpoint and we want to tell it, and as a bonus, when it comes back for really dedicated fans, they can start tracking this stuff. There might be a way that you can sell me on this, but my instincts are, mm, don't love it. Robert? Well, it depends how well, again, how well is it going to be done? Like, you, you look at a movie like Back to the Future, which came out 32 years ago. One of the great screenplays of all time, using time travel in a very interesting way to, to tell a great story about a character and illuminate his relationship with his family. Uh, beautifully done. If you did a, a movie like that about The Flash and it illuminated him as a character dealing with maybe not even the DC Universe but his own family, but of course at the end of Back to the Future, his family is slightly altered by Marty McFly's trip right. in time. His, his father is made kind of this baller science fiction writer. You know, he's no longer this nebbishy guy. And his mom's kind of a lot cooler than she was. But it and ties perfectly to the themes, as you're saying, of the movie. Absolutely. And, and I'd like to see a Flash movie necessarily like that. And yet it does give you the opportunity that if you want to do a little changing of the guard or move things around, you could do that. But I'm hoping that we get a really interesting movie that deals with destiny and, and relationships and roads not, not travel or roads less yep. traveled and things like that. Because I've always loved those stories. I want to see both Flashes, the CW Flash <laughs> and the, the movie Flash, team up, fight somebody in the Speed Force world. And then at the very end, they, you know, whatever this flashpoint, whatever the, we go through all these different worlds that have existed. And, you know, I would like to see that. And then I want to see like a Batman Beyond, Michael Keaton, uh, like they're in that world for a minute. I mean, you have the well, that'd be the coolest thing the ever. Opportunity the flashpoint offers that we're not even thinking about. We're like, oh, adapt the comic. It doesn't have to adapt the comic. It can go and go to all these different universes that the DC characters have gone to throughout the entire decades of comic books that exist we could touch on all these things we could weave together the cw universe and be like that's part of this other dimension it's like i think that's a great way and then when flash comes back 
everything's different. It could be a little bit like Sound of Thunder that Ray Bradbury, like, yeah. oh, you when you were running, you, you stepped on that butterfly and that affected everything. And now Clark Kent never died. And now this, the, all these things, and it wasn't this person that's Batman, it's this other person. They could soft reboot, recast, remake things and just have the ending be like a what the you know a wtf like what and how much fun i mean you've got i'm giving getting chills you could have like a, a brief moment of terrence stamp you know having yeah. conquered the world oh my god <laughs> that would be with non like throwing bodies into the river craziness put him right, in there with the melissa benoist supergirl and just see oh, what happens that would be Keep, fantastic okay, yeah Love it. all of the supermans all right melanie asks do you think valiant has a chance with their movies with the DC and Marvel glut, is there room for more cinematic universes? So does Valiant have a chance within all these other Marvel and DC movies that have been making their stakes and coming out? I think yes. Why? Because we see all these other movies that are succeeding that aren't Marvel and DC films necessarily. So The Kingsman is definitely, you know, it's a, I believe it's a DC, Right, it's DC, right? Uh, the rights switched between or was it Image? Icon and Image, I think. Yeah. Between the first and second okay, so yeah, service image. series. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's not DC or, or Marvel. So you have these movies that definitely succeed more so than not. So I don't think Valiant, as long as they make a really good movie, what are your thoughts, Robert? Well, again, you know, you see John Wick 1 and 2. There's some great world building in John Wick. They create this whole universe that you know exists all over the world that John Wick has only given you a little bit of. And why not? I mean, if the Valiant, again, if the Valiant movies are good, no one is going to associate the Valiant universe with the MCU or the DCEU because those characters are much more iconic. Right. Whereas the Valiant universe is something that the general population, you know, they didn't grow up with Bloodshot. Yeah. as a little kid, whereas a little kid, you're playing with Batman, you're playing with Wonder Woman, you're playing with Superman. So I think, yes, if the movies are good, they can have a shared universe, yeah, like chance, anything else. The chance to brand a brand new thing, like if Jared Leto is playing Bloodshot, that's a brand new way to introduce the character, Amy. Yep. Realistically, like you get you get advantages and disadvantages for entering a crowded marketplace. Uh, on the one hand, people understand what a superhero movie is, so some of your work is already done. On the other hand, like it is a crowded field. But there is always, like, there's, there's always room if you make the right thing. Everyone will go back and say, well, obviously we were all waiting for take X that had this that wasn't being brought right. in these other movies. Uh, it, so it, yeah, it does it change your odds? Almost certainly, but can it be done? Absolutely. All right, great. Uh, Donovan Hunter asks, I feel we should worry about Henry Cavill leaving as Superman. Will Man of Steel 2 actually happen? Well, I mean, so he's got Man of Steel, then he did Batman v Superman, now he's got Justice League, that's three movies. We don't know what his contract was. It could have just been three movies and he was supposed to do Man of Steel, Man of Steel 2, which is then turned into Batman v Superman, and then Super Man of Steel 3, which became Justice League. So is Henry Cavill gonna be done as Superman? Are we ever gonna see a Man of Steel or a Superman movie with him in it? What do you think? I think it depends who's gonna make Man of Steel 2. Uh, I, I don't know whether his contract gives him a choice, but I would imagine that if he does have a choice, it will depend a lot on who's gonna come in and what that movie looks like it's gonna be. Robert? Yeah, the same thing you said. Who knows? Right. I mean, I think right now he is Superman. If they have a great script and he wants to do it, sure. Yeah, I think Henry Cavill has stated, I will be Superman for as long as I possibly can. I'd love to see Matthew Vaughn come in and take that franchise to the next level. Question, Ganga Yunin Salo Salobra asks, could Hela be made an aspect or avatar of death? Or will they be separate? It's streamlined storytelling, good or bad idea. Well, as we said yesterday, yes, I think... Uh, Thanos needs that death lover, and I think it's going to be, hello, what's going on? I think they're not going to have death walking around with that shroud. It's like, come on and join me. They're, they're just not. If they introduce eternity, that's cosmic enough. I think we've already got death, and her name is Hella. What are your thoughts, Amy? Yeah, you pitched it the other day, and like they are, of course, traditionally separate characters, but it makes an awful lot of sense. They just happen to have introduced a perfect character to fit, play that role like by a brilliant actress. They, I think it would be smart. Robert. Me too. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Why introduce someone else? You have her. Definitely. And it's Kate Blanchett. Yeah. You she's can't... no longer glad real now. She's deaf. Yeah, you can't lose with Kate Blanchett. Josh Haynes asks, I'm excited for the diverse world of Wakanda and Black Panther. What aspect are you most looking forward to? 
Well, I got to be honest. I can't wait to just be in Wakanda and like see like there there's where they're mining vibranium. What does vibranium actually look like? What is it? I mean, we've seen like in the trailer, we've seen different versions of this nanotech, nanotech suit that both Black Panther and then we've got the gold Jaguar outfit. They're fighting each other. It's like, you know, we see all this kind of stuff. How is that? I, I'm interested in vibranium, Amy. Oof. It's it's a tie between that beautiful design work all over that film and that wonderful cast. Uh, I don't know which I'm looking forward to more. Well, you know, to be a little sexist, Lupita Nyong'o is one of those beautiful women on the planet Earth. And when she was cast in The Force Awakens, you didn't exactly see her at her best, to be honest. Right. She was Mas Kanata was awesome. <laughs> they will fight you for Mas Kanata. Mas Kanata is awesome. The orange Yoda. But yeah. man, to see her in that movie and that those amazing... First of all, I just want to live and I want to have my entire wardrobe designed by the costume designers for Black Panther because those costumes are amazing. The colors and everything. I just want to live in... The, like you said, I want to live in that world. Yes. And uh, I can't wait to see it, especially this idea of this El Dorado as a super scientific, technologically advanced land where that, that kicks ass. Everybody just kicks ass. I'm, I'm in. Well, bring it on. Well, we're going to see it in a few months. Black Panther. Uh, That's Kanata. She's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Lupita, she kicks ass in Black Panther. Wait till you see it. Um, last two questions. We've got Rowan asks, what is each of your favorite omnibus compilation of comics to reread? On a rainy day, I'll start off and say my favorite to reread on a rainy day. Uh, I have a couple, but I'll just say Year One, Batman, Year One, it's Frank Miller, David Mazzucchelli, or Miracle Man, Olympus by Alan Moore and John Tottleman. Amy? Um, my go to's are probably Alias, uh, the original Jessica Jones comics. Uh, so good. Or Runaways by Brian Vaughn, uh, or some of my indie graphic novels you can really sink into, like Fun Home. Mm. Robert? Sandman. Mm. I love my Sandman Absolute Editions. I also love Kingdom Come and, and Watchmen. But Sandman, I can't get, ever get enough of Sandman. Yeah. All of these are great rereads. If you don't own them, get them, put them on your book, and wait for it to rain. We got the sweaty question of the week, and it is coming from Jordan T. I'm sorry, Jordan D. Mertens. And this question is Could the Wonder Twins ever work in live action? or even in the 21st century? That is indeed a sweaty question. Jordan? No. You know what, I take it back. It could be an amazing comedy series. I think if they did it and they treated it like a comedy, because I know you had, you grew up, you watched the Super Friends, you were like, form of a vulture, form of a bucket of ice. And my kid mind would always be, where'd the bucket come from? What, did you also have a bucket inside of you when you turned into ice? None of it made sense. You can't really like take the Wonder Twins seriously. It's like bleep or bloop or whatever, you know. It's like from Space Ghost, Little Monkey. It's like, what do you want us a movie gleek? of the monkey? I can't even gleep. Gleek, yeah, gleek. Yeah, gleek. Uh, so anyway, let's take it seriously. Could Wonder Twins work in live action? And how would you make it, Robert? Well, of course. I mean, I, I think it absolutely could. Whether it's a comedy or I think a comedy would probably be, would be better. I mean, you know, it's funny. I was watching the first episode of One Punch Man last oh, right. night, and it opens with this giant, horrifying blue demon creature that shows up, and then One Punch Man just takes him out. And I think that that really it should be about a dysfunctional relationship with these two characters, whether they're siblings or best friends or whatever you're gonna, however you're gonna cast it. But they need each other. They have to be together to to use their superpowers. So they have to figure out a way to, maybe they're the Bickersons, they're always fighting, but in order to save the world, they have to put their differences aside so they can form of whatever it is they're gonna form of. Right. That could be really interesting. Amy, what about you? You got a concept for the Wonder Twins? I'm gonna apply the never say never rule, but I don't know. Part of the reason we love them is just that they were so goofy. So I'm torn between whether you should like take it seriously and reinvent them or find like that perfect goofy take that somehow feels fresh. I don't know, maybe make them supporting characters in the Booster Gold movie. Uh, yeah, that's actually that's a good not, idea. Yeah, I was I was like, that's hey, really good. Hey, can you cut to a wide wonder triplets power activate? Form of the end of the show. That's right. You've been watching Collider Heroes, episode 134. Robert, where can people find you? On find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. Find me on Instagram at RM Burnett. Or find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. Amy Dallin, where can people find you? I am on Twitter and Instagram at EnthusiAmy. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram just at John Schnapp. You can find me in Carmel, Indiana in uh, just another... Two days. I'll be there on Friday and Saturday 
Uh, the Carmel, Indiana Filmmakers Seminar. You could look it up. It's online. Google search it. I'm doing a show on the death of Superman Lives, doing some panel discussion. I'm going to have my Slayer comics on sale. It'll be a lot of fun. So anybody in the Indiana area or if you want to drive from Chicago, get on that train, son. Come and say hi. So you've been watching episode 134. See you tomorrow. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.